What's going on guys? Phil here, Phil's Craft Corner. We are back in the workshop today. It's been a little while since I've actually made something in the workshop. I've been doing a, a lot of laser work. A lot of working from home really, which is what we're supposed to be doing. And I can't work in the workshop because it's just me in a big empty workshop. So uh, today I am making a guinea pig pen. And what we need for the guinea pig pen is right here. Uh, so I've got a sheet of plywood, I'm using 12 mil just to keep the weight down, it's going to be plenty strong because of the supports anyway. I've got some netting for the front of it, got some caster wheels that are going on the bottom because this is going on a stand which is going to be made out of some freebie 2, so I've got three lengths of 2.4 freebie 2 and I've got three lengths of 2b1. That should be enough, if I need any more I'll just pick up some more but the, the 2b1 is pretty much basically for the frame for this netting to pin into uh, so that should be okay. Get the tripod set up, we'll clear this off and we'll start cutting down this plywood. Okay guys so what I'm doing here is I am marking out for my track saw to cut this sheet of plywood down. When you're marking for a track saw always mark from the left to the right and lay your track to the left of the mark that way the piece that you're cutting you end up with on the left and that is an exact size to the edge of the track. So as you might notice the blue part at the top of my track is slightly different to the other part. That's because I bought a second track saw. I cut through the wire of my original track saw while fitting a kitchen in a tight space and it was just a mistake. And when I went to buy a new one, they stopped selling the Titan brand and they've changed it to the McAllister brand. It's the exact same saw, so you can use the tracks together. I now have a 2.8 meter length track because I've got two 1.4s, or four 700s. So I'm just using a square to square off my track and that will help me just cut the piece straight and always try to make sure you know where the cable is uh, I don't make that mistake ever <laughs> uh, I try to keep an eye on where my cable is as you can see it's a nice easy straight cut you don't need the clamps the neoprene strip underneath the track helps keep a grip just keep keep it clear of sawdust and things like that and try to support both pieces so you don't end up doing what I just did. Now I'm just measuring and marking for the next cut. This is the base of the unit and I'm using the other half of the sheet that I've just cut down. To I needed to take about 12mm of this so it's again the exact same process. Make sure it's square, get your track and just nice and easy run straight through. Job done. As you can see, removing the extra lengths of the track are nice and easy. You just undo the two grub screws. Um, I have another two on the bottom, but I don't always tighten them up uh, if I'm going to be changing them that quickly. Uh, it just helps hold it together a little bit more. Once you take your track apart, every now and again, just make sure there's no sawdust across this neoprene strip. Uh, you, if it's really bad, you can just get a little brush and go across there. And If it's really, really bad, you can just get an airline and clean it off. It's nice and easy, once it's nice and clean it just grips the wood really well for you and you don't need to mess about getting your clamps set up. So it turns out that this off cut from the end of the sheet isn't quite long enough to get the two sides done but I do have a piece that was left over from another project which is again in 12mm ply so I can use that for the other side piece. Again just using the track saw I trim both these side pieces down to the right size that I need. So these are all the pieces that I need. I have my back, I have my base, and I have my two sides. The front is going to be made out of the 2B1 and a piece of 6B1, which I swapped out for the base. I actually used a piece of 4B1 placed on top of the 2B1, but if you want to make one of these, I suggest using a bit of 6B1 across the bottom. I'll get into that and explain why we need that a little bit later on when I'm nearly finished with the project and you can see what is for a little bit easier. Okay so now we can start looking at assembly and to assemble this I am going to use Titebond 2 as my wood glue because I always use that for absolutely everything 
but because I'm on my own and I can't hold the two pieces together to stick some brad nails in there and hold it, I'm going to use a little trick that I use and that is I run some wood glue along and every few centimetres I leave about a centimetre gap and then I fill that in with mitre bond. Now I use uh, it's Unica Mitre Bond and I get this from Howden's, it's usually free for a tenner at Howden's but you can get them from Screwfix, Amazon, pretty much anywhere. If you are getting the one from Screwfix, don't let them sell you their own no-nonsense brand, it's absolutely terrible and doesn't dry. So I'm going to show you my method of gluing these together with the little gaps in there and how it works and just how strong the Mitre Bond is while it's holding, waiting for the wood glue to dry. So the mitre bond holds really well temporarily and then the wood glue holds permanently after 24 hours. So this is just a quick method of doing that easily on your own. So I'm just lining everything up, making sure that both the ends match up and they're quite well lined up together and there's not too much of a bow in the piece of wood. And it turns out to be pretty well lined up. As you can see, it's a long length, it's 1.8 meters by 500 mil. And when I'm running the glue across the top, as I said before, I run it for a couple of centimeters, then I leave about a centimeter gap, and then another couple of centimeters all the way along. It's a little bit difficult to see, but as you can see, there's a couple of gaps in that glue that are and uh, that's where I put the mitre bond. So I just put a, about a pea-sized blob of the mitre bond on there and that will help act as a clamp while the wood glue is drying and giving it the strength. And then I just need to grab the activator spray and just give it a good spray along the area where you are working on and you want the glue to set. Don't worry about being overzealous with the spray. You end up using about a third less of the spray generally than the glue itself. I've got two or three tins always spare of the spray and it just builds up. So if you can find anywhere that sells the glue on its own, that'll be brilliant for me. Now comes the fun part of flipping this over and lining it all up. You get around five to 10 seconds working time. That's when the mitre bond will set. So try and line it up before putting the pressure on because it does hold really strong and it can be difficult to line up again and you're going to pull the top layer of fibers off the plywood. Like I say, I only do this because I am on my own and this was too big to hold and brad nail in, uh, but it worked out really, really well. As you can see, I'm struggling a little bit with one side because the board slightly warped, but the other side has already held at that point and I could concentrate on pushing that side down and it was done. So that took about 30 seconds to get set up and uh, that was mainly due to one side not actually being flat down there and but 30 seconds to get one side glued and held together is absolutely brilliant even using a brad nailer that would take you a good couple of minutes to get the brad nails in there so it works out really well especially when you're on your own and you're struggling to hold two pieces together just to show you the strength of this mitre bond this was about 30 seconds after I did the initial glue up and that is just held up together by the mitre bond and it's holding really really strong. The issue we use in this method is it's difficult to get things square because you're just working with your eyes basically you, you're trying to hold it as well as you can because you're on your own and it's really big and unruly but the two side pieces that I have will help pull that into square once they are trimmed down and put into place. I made the mistake of cutting these to the exact size that I wanted to make the box and I didn't take into account the 12mm piece that I was putting on the back. So as you can see at the front there it's overhanging by about 12mm so I'm just going to mark that there and I'm going to trim it down with a track saw. So I used the same method of the wood glue leaving the gaps and using the mitre bond on this one just to show you a little bit easier how I did it along that big length along the back. Sorry I'm a little bit in the way in this shot but as you can see it's nice and easy to line up. It sets nice and quickly especially when you can put a little bit of pressure on there. 
and then we just need to clean up a little bit of the squeeze out and it's job done. So here I'm just using my micro saw to trim down the length of 2b1 that I was using for the bottom. I recommend using 6b1 for the bottom because it helps give that little bit of a lip to stop sawdust being thrown up on the edge. So I'm just going to clamp this piece into the bottom. I'm just going to use some wood glue and some quick grip clamps. I really like these quick grip clamps because they are really, really easy to use. They don't have the highest clamping power, but for something like this, they hold well enough. So after letting that glue dry up a bit on the bottom, I clamped on the two sides, I glued the clamps the two sides on and I might have bonded the top to the sides and once I put the mesh into the front and pinned it all into place, that will hold it all together anyway so that top frame doesn't need to be that strong. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to build the legs and we are going to assemble that part and get it screwed together. Alright guys, so I realise this video is actually a little bit long right now. It's probably going to end up being in three parts. I don't know how the second and third part is going to be. Might be a little bit quicker. I've cut out a lot of footage to try and condense this down as much as possible. This was a three day build and hopefully you're going to stick with me for the other two parts. If it is two parts, I'll try and do it in one for you because I know sitting through these and doing multiple parts can be a little bit annoying. but. I want to try and give as much information as possible so you can then go away and build one of these if you want to. So thanks for sticking along so far. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Please subscribe to follow along and don't miss out on the next parts and I will see you in that one. <laughs>